Let's talk about two-point source interference, or 2D interference. I'm going to run through some of this fairly quickly because we want to get to down to how do you use the formula and get the right answer on the test. So, if you have two point sources, imagine you're sitting in a swimming pool, on the edge of a swimming pool, and you put your feet in the swimming pool and you move them up and down like this, you create circular waves around your feet, and those are called the two sources, and this is the pattern you get. You get a bunch of rings like this from one source, and a bunch of waves or rings like this from another source. When you look at the pattern and you put those two sources together, you get something that looks pretty complex. And we want to simplify it. What's interesting about this pattern is that there's an underlying mathematical relationship to this pattern. And physicists use this pattern with uh, other types of waves to make calculations to find things like the wavelength. So it doesn't seem like it's very useful right now, but it's going to be really useful when we get to Young's double slit experiment to calculate the wavelength of light. So I have two sources making circular waves. I look at this pattern, and the yellow lines here are the crests that are created from the pattern. The light orange lines, they're the troughs. And what I can do is I can go through this pattern and put little dots wherever a crest is meeting a crest. That would be a super crest. And wherever a trough is meeting a trough, that would be a super trough. So the water will be very turbulent in those places. I can also put dots where a crest from this source is meeting a trough from this source. When a crest and a trough meet, they cancel out and the water will be very calm. So this is moving, and you can go on the internet and see this kind of thing in water to see what this pattern looks like. But if I put all these dots on there marking those points, it creates this kind of fan shape here. All the points here line up where crests are meeting troughs. So instead of drawing this complicated pattern when I analyze a problem, I'm going to simplify it and just draw these lines. This line represents the center of the pattern where the water will be very turbulent. It's called the central maximum. These lines represent where I would see, if I could see this in water, the water is very calm there and I get a line going up like that. So these are called nodal lines. So the basic idea is two sources of waves create this complex pattern. Visually, when you look at this complex pattern in water, it creates a pattern of fan-shaped nodes. And these we can use to make some calculations. So imagine I've done this in water, and I've marked out the nodes where they are. I can find that if I put, pick a point, any point on the first node, and draw a line like this and a line like this, we call this point P. This is the first source and the second source. In order for there to be a node here, in order for there to be a crest meeting a trough and on the first node, this wave must have traveled a little bit further than this wave. If you look, this line is longer than that line. We call that the path difference. The path difference is very important. That's what the underlies the mathematics of this. So the path difference from here to here and from here to here is half a wavelength. Meaning if this wave has to travel half a wavelength longer than the wave from this source, the two waves are going to end up there out of line with each other, and they're going to cancel each other. It turns out if I pick a point on the second nodal line, that the wave from here must have traveled one and a half wavelengths further. So it's out of line again, but it's out of line by one and a half wavelengths. So we, that's great if you understand that. But the point is, here's the pattern. This is a point on the first nodal line, and there's a mathematical equation that governs this. Here's the equation. It turns out that if I pick a point, any point on the first nodal line, and measure this distance and this distance, the difference in those distances has something to do with the wavelength. So I call this the path difference in centimeters. This line is so many centimeters. This line is so many centimeters. The amount that this is longer than this line, and it's absolute value, so it doesn't matter which one you do, will tell you how much one line is longer in centimeters than the other. On the first nodal line, the path difference in terms of how many wavelengths further has it traveled from here to here is given by this expression, n minus a half. So, on the first nodal line, this wave has traveled one minus a half lambda. It's traveled a half wavelength further. On the second nodal line, this wave 
has traveled two minus a half, one and a half wavelengths further. So this is how much further the wave has traveled in terms of lambda. This is how much the wavelength has traveled further in terms of centimeters. And by relating these two together, I can solve for what is the wavelength that created this pattern. And frequently, that's what we're looking for. Here's a pattern. Here's the underlying pattern. Here's the formula that governs it. Can that formula tell me what wavelength these waves must have been to create that pattern? So if I give you an example, I say here's S1, here's S2. I'm not going to draw all the rings because that's just a lot of work. Um, I'm going to draw this, n equals 1. There's my second nodal line. There's an equivalent on the other side. And I pick a point, p, on the second nodal line. And I draw a line from here to here, and a line from here to here, and I measure this. This is 24 centimeters, and this is 21 centimeters. If this pattern exists, and I pick a point on the second nodal line, and it's 24 centimeters from S1 and 21 centimeters from S2, how big were the waves? What was the wave like the wave that created that pattern? So I plug it into here. PS2 is 21 minus PS1, which is 24. It's on the second nodal line, 2 minus 1 half lambda. So in terms of centimeters, this line is three centimeters longer than this line. In terms of lambdas, how many wavelengths further from this side than from this side? It's 1.5 lambdas. So if three centimeters equals 1.5 lambdas, this will only work if the wave that made this pattern was two centimeters long. Now I could take a ruler and go up here and measure there's the two crests. The distance between two crests is a wavelength. I could measure that, and it should be two centimeters. Why do we do this? We want an under, a formula to describe this pattern, which we can then later adapt in the next video to look at more complex problems. And then eventually, we want to do what's called Young's double slit experiment, where we're using a formula derived from all of this.